listeners. I'm your host, Kieran Tross, with another What Is video for you. Today, we're going to be talking about what is a managed service account. There are two types of managed service accounts. One is a standalone managed service account, and then there's a group managed service account. But before we dive into what these two are, I want to go in and explain what the traditional service account is and how we got here. A service accounts are, typically, are a special type of non-human privilege accounts used to execute applications and run automated services. They can be used to trigger events or allow a third application to read into your Active Directory system. So if you have an application such as Workday, you may have a service account that will read access plus other privileges into Workday. This way, your entire Active Directory system can be read to provide access into the said application. Service accounts act as an identity to perform a task or a set of tasks. The problem with service accounts is the management. Service accounts are used to perform a task that needs to be repeated. Therefore, once they are set up, the credentials for the account aren't changed. Most organizations don't have a properly designed access review process that monitors these type of accounts, let alone a regular user account. So let's say an employee was terminated from your organization. This person feels that they were treated unfairly. Now that person may have been in IT or may have worked closely with the IT staff. They somehow were given the passwords four years ago. Now this same service account password is still the same as it once was. The ex-employee is now able to get into the, onto the network and cause havoc. Let's hope this service account doesn't have elevated privileges or even in the domain admin group. Trust me, I've seen this happen before. You see how traditional service accounts can create a problem. So standalone managed service accounts help solve this problem to a certain degree. Standalone service accounts are managed domain accounts. They provide automatic password management, simplified service principal name, the ability to delegate management to other administrators, and the passwords that they generate are 240 bytes long passwords. So one of the best things is Windows never exposes the password to IT, which would solve the issue we talked about earlier regarding the ex-employee. Now you have to have a Windows Server 2008 R2 or higher to use these type of accounts, managed service account or group managed service account. But let's think about what you need to consider if you're in, if you're in an organization that has traditional service accounts and you need to move over to a more sustainable and up-to-date uh, process. One of the things you need to consider is the Windows Server operating system version, which I mentioned earlier it has to be a 2008 R2 or and above. Hopefully, you're on the more of the later date ones. The use of the managed service account. You have to say, okay, what is this account being used for? Why am I creating it? And then also, thirdly, what type of service or application this account will support? You want to make sure that you're constraining your, your service account to do the job it needs to be done. Least privilege is really the key factor here, right? That's the term that we're always hearing about, or if you haven't heard about, basically least privilege is saying, I'm going to give you just the amount of rights you need in order for you to do the job. So this is a screenshot from Microsoft's website. Um, if you were to go to and type in uh, group managed service accounts or standalone managed service accounts, Microsoft tells you all the good things about service accounts, but it also tells you where the risks are. So the first thing is, it says uh, standalone managed service account is a member of a privileged group. So the way to mitigate that is what I was mentioning before. Remove the SMSA from elevated privilege groups such as domain admins. Use least privilege model and grant the uh, standalone managed service account only rights and permission it requires to run the services. And if you're unsure of the required permissions, consult the service creator. In IT, you're gonna be asked questions and to set up different applications because the business needs to, and the business needs to function, but you need to understand exactly what the business is trying to do. So whether it's HR coming to you or it's marketing or whatever other department within the organization, you need to really get a fundamental understanding of what they need in order for them to be successful in doing their job. Another thing is uh, it has read write access to sensitive sources. So you wanna always make sure you're auditing the sensitive resources Archive audit logs to a security information event management program. 
such as Azure Log Analytics or Microsoft Sentinel. And then remediate resource permissions if an undesirable level of access is detected. And then by default, it changes its password every 30 days. Now you can fine tune that depending on your organization. Your CISO might say, hey, we don't want it to change every 30 days. We want to change every 15 days. That is entirely up to you. So what are the other challenges of, S of standalone managed service accounts? Uh, so standalone managed service accounts can only be used on a single server only. Uh, you have to use group managed service accounts on every other uh, instance that you want to use if you want to use it across servers. So, you know, I've been talking so much about standalone managed service accounts um, and didn't really mention too much about group managed service accounts. The reason being is because they're pretty much the same. Right, it's just really how 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 it can be used. So, group managed service accounts are basically standalone managed service accounts on steroids. That's just like the simplest way of thinking about it. They both do the the same thing. The only thing is, group managed service accounts can be used across servers versus standalone managed service accounts are used on a specific server. And that's basically what this site is 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 talking about. And then finally, there is is not all applications support standalone managed service accounts. It says use a GMSA, which is a group managed service account, if possible. Other, otherwise, use a standard user account or a computer account, such as recommended by the application creator. So sometimes you'll run into situations where a standalone managed service account or a group managed service account may not work, and you may have to go back to the traditional way. But just make sure if you're going back to the traditional way that you are putting in long characters, I would say do something with at least 20 characters. I know that's a pain, but... You should do something where it's 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 harder for a hacker to get in. And then also, you also want to make sure that you're, you're implementing access reviews. And those access reviews should also include password management and password changes. So that is the end of this what is video. And today's topic was uh, managed service accounts. Uh, I hope that you find the information that I provided to you uh, beneficial and educational. Uh, please. As always, I, you know, I appreciate it. If you like and subscribe, I definitely have more videos coming. Um, even uh, having a video coming up where I'm going to be talking about um, the top 10 things to do in terms of service accounts and uh, the best practices that I find. Um, so once again, uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. See you next time.